this video is going to focus on the extreme basics of just starting to use uh, a MIDI instrument inside of Reaver. So uh, the first thing we're gonna we're gonna want to do, which I've done already here, but I'll show you uh, the options, is we're gonna go to track, and then insert virtual instrument on new track. And the reason we're going to do that instead of just making a channel and adding it as an effect is because, as you can see here, it's got a bunch of different files. If you click on your virtual instrument, this is um, Easy Drummer. Let's click OK. It's going to ask us if we want to have it build its multiple outputs. Now, with drums, it matters. With like a keyboard, it won't really matter. Um, so with drums, like I did here, I press yes so that it sections everything out. One of the good things about going to track insert virtual instrument rather than just adding a new track and then just, you know, adding an effect to it is because it will automatically set it up to record as MIDI rather than by default, um, a new track records as audio. So it's not big, I'm not a huge... Uh, deal. You can just click here, input MIDI, and then select or select uh, all MIDI, which is the same option that that has there. So it's not a huge deal, but it just makes it one uh, one little step easier to get started. So track, insert, virtual instrument to new track. Select your virtual instrument. Press OK. If you want it to break out to multiple channels select OK on the next screen which will, will ask you that if you don't care press cancel and it'll keep it just playing through the host file or the host track uh, I'll show you the uh, panel here now this is Reaper 4 so it's slightly different the next thing I'll show you here is we've got our input so if you have multiple keyboards and you want to actually have two keyboards going at the same time that are MIDI um, controllers you can go into the MIDI section say I have um, Fire Studio, I could say on Fire Studio, I want th that to control that. And if you had, you know, a drum pad machine, you press for the drums, you can select, you know, your next output or your next uh, MIDI input. So that's if you're actually going to play it. Now, uh, a lot of people are just programming drums and other instruments now. And to get started with that, if you know how many bars you want your section to be, you can do a time selection. If you don't, you can start out with just a simple MIDI item, which you, to get that we would go to insert, new MIDI item. That's just going to give us a blank one bar of whatever your tempo is. And obviously um, MIDI things change by default to equal one bar in the next tempo. So we can always change the tempo later. And um, so that was insert, new MIDI item give us this. This is a blank box right now. But when you double click on this, or your piano roll here, uh, and you can start to double click to plot a sound. The first one just clicks, or just makes a sound. And also if you drag it, it makes the sound. So um, you just find your um, sections. That's kicking snare, so. And if you push play on this, you hear it play back. Um, and this does not need to be record enabled if we're just plotting it like this. I mean, it's not like it doesn't really matter too much, but if you happen to hit your keyboard, it'll make a sound. And uh, to get it so that we can have it just keep on looping back and forth and we can just keep on adding to our beat, you have to click on this um, loop button here, which is toggle repeat or you press R. And now when we play, it'll go from here to the end of whatever is in your session and go to the beginning. So now we only have one item, we don't have to do a time selection. If we had it, if we had multiple sections, we'd have to do a time selection or else it would go to the end of the session every time. So right now we can just press play. Okay. Now, if we had, um, like I said before, this was over here and we didn't want it to play the intro every time they go to it, we could do a time selection by clicking and dragging into here. And then um, 
we just click the beginning to start in this section and it will loop only the highlighted area. Okay. Now, if you knew that you wanted a four bar section starting at 2-1, you can go um, just do a time selection here. So we got two, so that's one bar, two bars, three bars, four. And then if you go to insert new MIDI item, it'll make it the whole length of your time selection. So we can keep the time selection there because we don't want just to loop that. And now, um, let me undock this. And now we can go ahead inside of this whole section and um, start plotting out a beat. Okay, so. Now I could just press play for this and hear it as it comes back by. And uh, when you plot, you can set it so that you can hear when you plot or not, I like to to hear when I when I plot the, my notes. Um, that's in the options. I mean, I'll maybe touch on that in a different video. But um, if we press play now, we can hear what's going on. <laughs> it's pretty pretty basic beat here, obviously. But um, and then you can um, to um, select inside of the MIDI editor you need to right click and hold to get your lasso tool and then uh, I want to copy all these to the next bar section so I'm going to hold control wait till you get that little uh, icon there the uh, cursor with the box and just click and drag and I'm going to do the same thing for this and then I'm going to start here but probably end up getting rid of some of these uh, notes to get rid of the notes you just double click on them or you can highlight a few and press delete so these control drag control drag let's see how horrible this sounds <laughs> this is actually in the wrong spot so anyway, that's the simplicity of just uh, plotting out your notes. You need to find them here. And when you find your sections, you can go ahead and label them by double right clicking. And to save these names, you go to File, and then Custom Note Names, and just save a note names to file and it saves it to a text file. Then you have to you have to import it again later, but at least um you can have your labels on there. So um now that we have our section here, if we want to loop it, um we just drag it out. Let me see the bracket. Now if we wanted to extend this section inside of the editor, there's two icons we'll see. We have the pencil or three icons. There's a pencil there's this vertical line, and then there's uh, this one with a little grate. The vertical line one extends the actual MIDI item. So if we say, oh, we want this to be six bars, we'd use the line. And if you use the one that's the grate, that's just a loop point. So we don't want that to be that long. We want it to be back to six bars, or I'm sorry, four bars. And we can loop it in here, but it's a little awkward. Um, I'd recommend just closing out your MIDI editor and looping it here because it, it's a lot easier. You can also edit inside of the Reaper window here by pressing E on your keyboard after you select it, and you see these notes here. Now, you won't have your labels, but if you just want to quickly, you know, if you're playing it back in your loop section, and you want to quickly just, you know, I don't want this to have an open hi-hat. I want it to be a crash or something. You can just um, be inside of here. You can either double click and go to edit it there, or you can just press E on it and then drag it up. And you can actually do it while it's playing too, so. So 
so say this one we want to be a crash. Oops. Okay, now it'll be a crash. <laughs> so that's just pressing the E key inside of here. And press E again when you're done. Obviously, you have to have the item selected when you press E, or else it won't do anything. If you're outside of it and you press E, it just it is there's no function for that. You need to actually click on it. Um, you can also, um, I mean, you can edit MIDI on these notes here, just like anything else with audio, like the slip tool, if you wanted to. Um, I don't know why you'd really do that, um, but you could. You could do it. And if you want to, uh, let's undo these two slices. Also, with your MIDI stuff, if you go ahead and um, control drag, just like anything else in this program, it copies it. If you open this up and we change, you know, some beats here, it only changes the one we copied. It doesn't change, even though it has the same name and originated from here. It will be different. So. If you say, you know, I did my four bars, but I want a little more variation in the next one or a little more of a complex beat, you can copy it and just add to it. You don't have to start it from scratch. And you don't have to worry about editing the copied one um, because it won't affect the original. So if you want it to be exactly the same, that's why you loop it. If you want to make different changes, that's why you would copy it and open it up and make your changes inside of it. So that's the basics of the uh, the MIDI items. A lot of people, um, you know, they can find their virtual instruments and they can get them on the track, but they don't even know how to insert the MIDI item to start editing. I'm going to open up the uh, virtual keyboard here. And if I press record, I should be able to hit these. And I'm going to press stop, save that, and then we have the notes I just played. inside of there. But obviously you'd use most likely use a real keyboard, not the the virtual keyboard and it would uh work better. <laughs> so that's it for now. It's uh, just supposed to be a little basic overview of getting started with the MIDI, being able to plot some notes and everything. Uh, I have an upcoming DVD coming out that will be everything to do with MIDI in terms of creating music uh with it. Um debating right now whether I'm going to do an orchestra scoring or um, do more of a um, like a rock and roll type band, but all plotted in MIDI. So you guys can leave some feedback on that, what you think. Um, maybe I'll leave it up to you on what you would like to see in the DVD. Um, that's it for now. Um, Johnny from tutorialsforever.com and Red Sneaker Records. <laughs>